Okay, so you profess that you don't believe in God. You articulate to every person who's a Christian, who's a Muslim, who's a Wiccan, who's a Catholic, that you think their faith that is in voodoo is completely odd. But what you decide to do is, on a choice of your own, decide to steer your life completely off track. You pursue a man in your community that you find the, uh, to be completely handsome, only to inherit the four children of his late spouse, who he probably killed out of some fit of passion, some fit of rage, because he was too immature to know what to do. The life force in people is no longer in ministries that are healthy, wealthy, and wise. When Jesus Christ went into the temples of the Jews, what did he do? He raged at their lies. The lie was, I'm going to collect food, I'm going to collect funds, I'm going to collect taxes, without recognizing the Lord in any of them. And while I can recognize as Jesus Christ, Lord of all, and again, I'm in per doing in per personification, that openly I'm telling you, you have abused your rights to the house of God. The other day when someone approached, I was very offended. I'm always offended by someone who wants to lie about their purpose to give someone, anyone, financial support. If they've seen a sign and they've really actually felt that sign and they've really internalized that sign for their own life, then writing work, creative work, intellectual property work, copyright work has done its job. The last week or two, I've been test marketing a concept, a sign to see if it will help my ministry as we come out of COVID. But what I know about the liars in the hood is they've been allowed to thrive. They've been allowed to thrive because their parents don't mind that they're up running around in their 18, 19s and 20s and they're stalking people and they're roughing people up and they're harming people. And in my case, they're illegally and immorally standing before the Lord Jesus Christ below the house of the Lord, below the heaven's gate of God, and they're actually sexually assaulting someone. They are physically and financially abusing someone. And what they did was instead of encourage a man who's supportive of women's rights and people's rights and black lives matter rights and people around the world's lives like the Asian Hate Crime Act that's gone into place for a lot of technological reasons, they decided to pull a man out of his clothes, these black women who work at hospitals. They decided to lie about their rights to produce records that would have never been produced by the gentleman that they belong to. They decide to lie in front of God in heaven so that when they actually go to the Lord's house, which they don't believe they're going to do because once again, they don't have a faith like me and you, is that they'll actually be standing there probably shivering in front of the cherubim who literally bow down to the Lord. And Lord Jesus Christ will be standing there in his marvelous white robes that we're all accustomed to seeing him in, in the pictures of antiquity and the, the history and the heritage that we've always assigned to that person of God. And you'll literally be standing there and you'll have to explain to the Lord in heaven why you got someone sexually assaulted. You'll have to explain to the Lord in heaven why you felt you had the right to lord over someone's face. You'll have to explain to the Lord Most High why you had any right at all to know about that person's body situation. You'll have to explain to the Lord Most High why you had the right to sexually assault, mutilate, and rape someone's genitalia. You see, for every act of game playing that you college students have done with your marvelous lies about how you're in high school and whatnot, in Christendom, and your beliefs that you're doing the right thing, you're gonna have to stand before God who'll say, do you have any understanding for what these other people, a part of your gaming process, did to that man? You are accountable now. You are liable now to me, God in heaven, for your interference in a living, great breathing creature's life. You see, God only gave us the ability to abuse, if you will, to murder, if you will, to literally slay the beasts of the world. And he gave us that right so we could do one of two things. That we could eat, literally, and survive in the way that we have to, in the way that we need water, in the way that we need meat and the way that we need fruits and vegetables and whatnot based on our own cellular health and our physical needs but at the same time he said you must marvelously protect yourself from the serpents and the other creatures the 
the various uh, killer bees and whatnot that are ravaging the earth. And to do that, we have to be willing to use fire. We have to be willing to use brimstone. But what's most important, what I'm seeing across American culture and across American society and across this land that I love, is that no one is building an altar in their homes to burn incense called frankincense to honor the house of God. You see, if you want to have a safe and holy home, you have to pick a particular type of wood, not at all, but you do have to pick a roof and a pitch and a type of windows that don't honor Satan. You see, a three-tiered roof is the safest house pointing to the Lord's house. Those that have four, five, and marvelously six are grandiose in scheme. And what happens in life over the course of time is more than obvious to people like me who have now lived a section, a very small portion of their marvelous 53 years in life. And this sexual assault and this abuse that these uh, Persians and these Africans and these Indians do to people who are impoverished is the belief in thinking that if I give you with some paltry dollar bills, then I can do whatever the motherfucker I want to you even sexually assault you without you ever knowing because I placed your beverage that you've set aside for keeping your body healthy and I've ruined your food because I've touched the packages of you so that you will fall asleep and I can do whatever the hell I want you to to you. The liars in sexual human trafficking come out of every color and every race. And it's interesting that a woman in my extended family was doing all this work on sexual harassment, student rape, and whatnot, and is marvelously the responsible unit who brought the concept of sexual harassment, not at all, but human trafficking into a fairly affluent and fairly, fairly influential community. And isn't it marvelous that that youngest sibling, that youngest intelligent brother, that one that has prophetic gifts of the Lord said, Please don't do this anymore. Please don't do these things because what you're doing is putting your entire family at risk, your extended family members at risk to the sexual trafficking that you profess that you're protecting people against. So in the concept of creating a creative story like Let's Pretend, this marvelous children's series that we used to listen to on 45-inch records and little, I uh, forget what the little uh, things, but it was my record player that I received for Christmas that allowed me to do this and learn about the dangers of the world. But the truth is that the predators are right here. The liars of Satan are right here in our communities. The sinful sisters of a segregated hood are right there lying to themselves about their rights to dishonor God's creations fix what is not their lawful right to even know about, destroy medical and mental health records with their lies about their talking with people when all they did was walk up and palm a few paltry dollars to someone like me, but they actually made a purchase. Most of the time when someone gives you cash, it's your job to try to give them a sale. And that sale is based on the terms of agreement of why are you giving me this money? Are you giving this money because you feel guilty about what you're lying in your own way about the rights that you think you have to me? Or are you paying me this money because I've just decided to hand you back something that I created in artwork from the Lord's house who gifts me and cares for me? You see, when you just stole that sign from me that I didn't authorize to you on campus, what you said was poo-poo on God. I'm going to do what I want to this man. I'm going to steal from him at hand and I'm just going to give him a handful of dollars because according to the rumors on him, he got it all from the trash anyway. No, the words of God don't come from a trash can, do they? The words of the Lord don't come in a way that you abuse them, do they? Or have you so forgotten your heritage and your roots and how Jesus Christ came from the Middle East and a black root line to the whites that still love him today that you have failed to represent Jesus today? And you so failed in your way of being selfish, unkind, unloving, and gaming, saying one thing to a person and then turning around and pissing all over the conversation that you were made in your lifetime to have because of the color of the rainbow that God painted you, that you openly don't think that a pagan priest has any rights at all to the Lord. 
And isn't it interesting that God gives me gifts that when the heart is open and the mind is supple, that the Lord can walk through an individual and rebuke them for their exact sins or praise them for their exact needs or give them actual medical advice on how to tend something that's right for them. You see, there's been marvelous psychics who've come before me and have met their end. And if it wasn't for me, a marvelous man who does incredible things with the beautiful rocks that Jesus Christ produces for us to use to collect energy and heal ourselves from many ways, literally died, but he only died much longer and later after I gave him a reading and told him he needed to get his precancerous conditions checked. You see, I pretty much nail people with their physical health is true. Because God wants people to know about a blown out knee. God wants people to know about their history, their medical history with diabetes. And they all look at me sort of in wonderment of how the hell did he know that about my mother? I don't look anything like that person. And how the hell did he know about my father? And what he did and how he treated me in abuse. And the saddest thing about people who come and players that come out of poverty is that they don't recognize that there are some standard concepts. If you were abused and beaten to death when you were a child, you're probably going to grow up to be some form of abuser, some form of liar. And I've got a whole list on the side of my cart supporting people who are childhood victims of abuse like me, but who are mature enough at a very early age in college time to spend a hell of a lot of re time reading people like Melody Beatty so that I could go on healthily and happily and futuristically with the praise of the Lord in life. You see, the foolishness of the hood says, I don't have to read anything. I don't have to study anything. I don't have to do anything but my thing on behalf of these companies. And here's the reality of legality and liability, you motherfuckers, that half of you I've never met before have been playing as if we should be peltry friends. And that's not Jesus Christ's way. And the other half of you were met by me by my patronage of your store which means your companies are 100 percent fully liable to the things that you have done to me that are illegal and immoral your lifelines begin and end solely and singly with you and your life choices but when you meet someone through a business relationship a transactional relationship a financial purchasing relationship a consumer rights relationship you put your whole fucking company on the line but here's what we know about immoral companies immoral companies will cover the the disparagement and the legalities of their employees to avoid publicity and avoid lawsuit before they ever take those employees personally to their knees in front of the federal government and say place them in jail so that our future employees will never do this to us and our past employees will be honored who brought us to this level of our business across American culture, across American land, and that we will never have a disparate reputation in any employee set or any community in which we work, serve, and earn. 